Hello there, this is Daniel from Two Chefs, and in this video we're going to have a look at how you can create a stadium wave inside Unreal. In my level I've already imported a stadium and I've also created two Atom Spline Actors that I'm going to use for creating my agents. To create an Atom Spline Actor you can just go under the Place mode and then under All Classes find the Atom Spline Actor, you can drag and drop into the viewport, you can then select uh, its CVs and then duplicate points if you want to add more points. Uh, also you can right click in the middle of the curve and do add splines point here and so basically in, in this way you can edit your uh, your splines um, for my splines that I've already created as you can see they're already uh, approximately matching the shape of the of the stadium and this is very important because basically the, the agents are gonna follow the shape of each uh, of each of these two splines and we're gonna create agents between these two splines uh, on a side note, I, I've not, I'm not going to create, uh, uh, I'm not going to use any height field for this uh, example. So you might also want to make sure that your splines, when you create your agents, uh, are also um, at the right height, so that basically you, the feet of your agents don't actually uh, intersect with the, with the, with the, basically with the mesh of the stadium. Also, I'm going to use the Atoms Agents for this example. Uh, I'm going to use just the Man Agent Type, and before we can use that uh, Agent Type, we have to edit it, just because by default, the uh, each Agent Type of the uh, Atoms Agents use the Local State Machine, but we want to use instead the Man Stadium State Machine, because this one has different clips uh, that we can play. I'm gonna show you in a second, so I, I just save this Agent Type, I'm gonna go under uh, state machines, and if I go under the main stadium state machines, you see here we have uh, a stand clip, a seat. Um, so as you can see here, we have a main stand. Then for the seat, we have a seat, uh, but then also we have an angry uh, with uh, an angry um, state with two clips. Uh, but we're gonna use the stand wave, so uh, this one also has two different uh, uh, clips, and also it's very important to remember that the node state is nine. So this basically because this value we're gonna use it later with uh, with our state machine. Okay, so now that I've changed my agent type, I can start creating my agents. So I'm gonna create a new agent group. I'm gonna drag and drop it in here, and I'm going to create a curve pair layout behavior, a state machine behavior, and that's it for now. So I'm going to make sure that the state at the moment is zero for the initially. I'm not gonna set any height field for the curve pair layout. So I'm gonna first uh, set the agent type to man, and then I'm going to select the first curve and then the second curve here. So as you can see, already my agents are being uh, placed into um, into basically the, the viewport, um, and uh, uh, I'm going to um, basically edit some values here of the uh, layout. So first of all, we can say how many rows we have. So usually you could you would count the number of steps between the two curves, and then type a value. So you could say five. Uh, of course, we have to make sure that the agents actually are like uh, in a in a correct position, so they don't actually intersect with the steps. And I think ten is actually a pretty accurate value, let's see. Yeah, let's say it's good for this example, we're gonna use nan. Uh, and then for uh, these two values here, num agent one and num agent two, this is basically the number of agents for each uh, curve. So basically 10 is the number of agents that we have on the first curve, N sorry, num agent one, which is 10. And then num agent two, uh, which is also 10, uh, is the number of agents for the second curve. We can, uh, um, you know, uh, change it so that basically let's say we create 15 and then 10 on the second. So the agents in between the two curves are going to be interpolated between 15 and 10. So if you want to have 15 agents for each uh, row, just type 15 and 15. We can randomize a little the, the number of agents uh, that are created uh, uh, in between. So we can say, for instance, I want to create, uh, uh, you know, uh, between three and eight agents more per row. And that's that has been done. Uh, the other parameters, you can check them uh, on the um, 
on the uh, on the documentation. We have also to change the direction type. So zero is basically following the tangent of the curve. If you want to have uh, uh, like have them following the the normal, you can just uh, type one here, and now they are um, facing you know towards the center of the stadium. So uh, we are pretty ha pretty happy now with the layout that we have. So I'm gonna save the the level. Uh, another thing that I've already done is to create this plane. Uh, so I've created uh, a plane that uh, uh, you know, like that, and I'm gonna use this one for uh, uh, you know triggering a change of state of your of my agents. So let's go back here. So first thing that we have to do is we have to create a um, a level sequence where we're gonna uh, animate the uh, the plane. So let's do, uh, call it plane sequence. I'm gonna drag and drop the plane in here. For the transfer, I'm gonna just uh, edit its location. So I'm gonna set a keyframe here, and then I'm gonna also make the the frame range a bit longer, so let's say 270 frames. Okay, so I'm, not, I'm now gonna save this one and also gonna go under properties and then when finished, I'm gonna set keep state. Save again. Cool. Um, okay, so another thing now that we need to do is uh, basically if now I press play, you'll see that the, uh, the plane of course stays there. Uh, the agents are uh, just playing the idle clip, so they're just there looking around, doing nothing really in particular. And uh, basically now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a blueprint for driving both the agents and the, um, and the plane. So uh, when the simulation starts. So, okay, so let's go back to the agent group. I want to create an area trigger module and the area trigger module, what it does is basically when the agents are actually overlapping with uh, a mesh, uh, the, you can basically change metadata on the agent. Uh, so uh, by default, uh, the, uh, the um, metadata that uh, is changed is called state, and uh, this state is an int metadata. Uh, you can find uh, the, um, all the metadata that are available for each agent uh, by default uh, in the documentation, and you will find them under the uh, metadata. Uh, section under the reference guide. This is gonna be under the, the Atoms Unreal 1 metadata. So if you scroll down, you'll see all the age, uh, all the metadata for uh, both the agents, the clips, and so on. And here basically tells you the type, but also if you can edit them or not. So if the, if it says yes, you cannot edit them, but for instance, like a lot of them are said are no. So basically you can actually edit them. And for in the case of the, the state, which is, uh, uh, let's state, yeah, here it says no, so you can actually override it and it's an int. Okay, so uh, now we can uh, select our plane here. And as you can see now, some values here have already been populated. So basically these are the values for the um, transformation of the plane. Um, of course, we have to make sure that this uh, information gets updated while the simulation is running because we otherwise Atomos won't actually know that the plane is moving and we'll, we'll do that uh, uh, with a blueprint. Um, also, uh, we're gonna have to set the int value for the, um, for the metadata. So we're gonna look for the int value. So this basically is the value that is gonna be set on the agents for the state metadata when uh, they are overlapping with the plane. 
So, and we said that basically the state uh, for the wave was nine in the state machine. So we can just go back and check it again. Man stadium state machine, uh, stand wave, it's nine. So uh, zero is the stand. So it starts at zero and then it goes to nine. You have to make sure that uh, whenever you are uh, going from one state to, the to another, they are actually connected. Because if they don't have a connection, they won't actually go uh, into, into the other state. So for instance, uh, if I'm here, so state zero, I can't go to state angry, which is state uh, 10. We have to go first through seat, which is one, and then go to state angry, which is 10. Okay, so so now uh, our trigger is set up. Uh, I'm gonna save it. If I press play, you'll see that the agents are still uh, just standing and not doing anything else. Okay, uh, so now we're gonna change the blueprint. Uh, let's open uh, the level blueprint. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the plane uh, sequence. So I'm going to create a plane sequence and I'm going to uh, get the sequence of player. And after that, I'm going to just uh, uh, play this. and attach to the event begin play. So now if I s compile this one and if I play it, you see that the plane, uh, it's actually moving. You see the shadow of the plane moving, but the agents are not actually changing state. And this is because the, um, as I said, the RH trigger needs uh, basically to have uh, its value updated. So what we'll have to do is uh, we have to make sure that the um, value of uh, the our sugar is updated. So after I've uh, uh, created a reference to the Atoms Agent group, I can then get the behavior. So I'm gonna uncheck content sensitivity and then get behavior uh, module by name. That's the one. Uh, for the name, it's basically the same name that you have here in the component list. I'm gonna make that. And I'm going to uh, set module property as vector. This is because what we have to do is uh, we're going to update the position and the position only of the plane. If you want also to up, um, you know, rotate your plane and update the rotation also you can, you will have to update the rotation, but in our case, we're just fine with, um, with, uh, with the translation. So I'm just going to uh, connect that to that. And I'm going to get this one to here. And finally, we have to say which property we want to update. And this is going to be mesh translation. So it's a big small mesh translation. If I go in here and there a trigger, you see that the mesh translation is this, um, this pa parameter here. Uh, you have to use the uh, atoms names. So uh, please check in the documentation the name of each uh, property, which is basically a metadata. So if you go back to the documentation and we go under behaviors. Uh, so in here we see area trigger and you see these are the names that you have to use. So mesh translation in our case, and that's it. So, okay, we're good. So we can save this one, it's compiled. So if now I press play, you see that now that the agents are actually doing the wave, but they are doing them uh, with a delay. And maybe, um, yeah, we, we don't want to have this delay. We want actually the, um, the wave to be uniform. And also, as you can see, the agents are continuing doing the wave, which is something that also we don't want. So first thing that we have to do is we have to go in the agent group, we have to go area trigger, and we have to uncheck the keep state keep value, sorry, like that. So that's unchecked now. If I press play, 
they should do it just once. And that's it. So basically, if that value is unchecked, so the keep value is unchecked, is basically as soon as they get out of the plane, the, the, the old value is set back on the agent. So basically the state goes back to zero. And you see that there is still that delay and to fix this, we have to actually tweak the um, clips for the, uh, for the agent. So what we're going to do is we're going to go under the animation clips and look for man stand is this one so just opened it uh, and we have to change the transition frames for this clip so if we look for a transition frame we see we have six elements so transition frames are uh, um, basically the frames that uh, each agent is using from transitioning uh, from this state to the next state so it basically means that uh, until it reaches any of these uh, frame during in, in the clip, it won't actually transition towards the, the next clip. Uh, so if you remove them all, uh, we are just going uh, to basically have a transition frame, which is going to be the, the, the end um, frame of, the, uh, of our loop, uh, which is also what, something that we don't want. If you want to use instead all the frame, which is our case, you can just create a new element and just uh, uh, create minus one. So we're going to save it. We're gonna go under agent group, and then uh, we're gonna refresh the agent group. And uh, now if we press play, you see that now the wave is uniform. And some agents are uh, uh, pulling their hands down before the others just because there are two clips. Uh, and basically one is shorter than the other. And this is all for this video, thanks for watching.